Texas. You know, he knows exactly what the facts is. He ain't gonna let those two escape justice. He makes his living off other people's taxes. Bobby Sue, she slipped away. Billy Joe cut up to her the very next day. They got the money. Hey, you know they got away. They headed down south and they're still running today. Singing, go on, take the money and run. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley, Andrew Richter, kicking butt, taking names, taking uh, taking a boot to the woke culture and uh, huh. not not looking back. How yeah, you doing? I'm doing terrific. I mean, I'm I'm fired up this week. I'm fired up. Good. I'm always fired up. I'm excited. That's good. You know, I mean, uh, you got a great time uh, here. I mean, I, I don't want to. Uh, you know, our subject today is not the greatest topic, although. Well, us being the great people we are, we have to inform the public even when it's not so bad. Or not so good, I should yeah, say. Not so good. Not so good. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could say it could be worse, but I it, don't It could I, be. It could be worse, sir. Certain but, cities, if you live in, I'm not I, sure. That's true. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, yes, now uh, the song yes. right there, yeah. I might know that one. Okay. Give me a second. All right. You know, uh, take that, the money and run. Mm-hmm. It's not a Paul Newman quote, so I, uh, it's no. uh, I'm gonna say Steve Miller Band. That's correct. <laughs> there you go. Eight and a quarter. No, the eight. eight, and a, eight That's no, a eight, flat eight. Eight and three eighths. That's a flat eight. Uh, but hey, you got credit for that one. That's all right. good. That's good. You're almost caught up with uh, Robbinsdale test scores. No, oh, am I? I think, <laughs> yeah, that's where that quarter, yeah. I was trying to tie them oh, you know, to I get see. that quarter. I see. Is that how it works? I'll tell you what. I'll yes. tell you what. Let me tell you first why I'm angry. Okay. Hey, you know, angry is the wrong word. I don't get it. Hell, and I want you to help me out on this. Uh, I'll do I'll, my best. I want to talk a little bit about this NBA China deal. Oh, boy. You know, there was a, um, let, let me say two things before we get into it. One. Professional athletes have the same First Amendment rights everybody else does. Yes, they do. Um, I will never try to muzzle somebody. Uh, I actually, just the other night, watched a uh, couple hours special on the Brooklyn Dodgers. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know the Dodgers are one of my favorite teams. And Absolutely. And they freaking got beat by those dang people from Washington, D.C., my yeah. least favorite town, uh, you know, ever since East Berlin went away. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know... Uh, and, and one of the things, uh, you know, obviously Jackie Robinson is a big focus of, of and I think his yeah. contribution to the civil rights movement is, is he wasn't as visible off the field. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, uh, I, I learned about, he had a good friendship with President Nixon. He yeah. didn't want the black vote to be taken for granted. Mm-hmm. I think he had a big influence. He had not as, maybe not as much as Dr. King. I mean, I, I'm not going to discount anything he did yeah. one of the greatest americans who ever lived and you'll never get an argument from me on that but professional athletes you know i think one thing these 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 guys you know people like jackie robinson weren't making millions of dollars i mean he quit baseball and he went to, like selling dryers or something like that <laughs> afterward right. as great as he was mm-hmm. i mean he's not like he walked away with more money that money falling out of his pockets and i just think to myself who plays a role like that as far as a professional athlete now? Really, the answer is nobody. Yeah, I mean, pretty close. Pretty much. And you watch what's going on in the NBA. And NBA ball players and professional athletes want to take stands here in America on, yes. on guns, on gangs, on race, kneeling in front of the flag. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, now it's sucking, you up, name to, it. sucking yeah. up to China now. Yeah. But, but I mean... They will criticize anything. The coaches will criticize anything. Everybody in America is fair game. Mm-hmm. A communist dictatorship responsible for more deaths than the Nazis. Six, and they, 60 million. They are. It's not even close if you really want to be honest oh, about it. Oh, it's not. I mean, the Nazis were less than, than the Soviets. Yes. And, and so China... Right. China is three times what the Soviets were. Amazing. Hitler is third on that list I behind know. Stalin and Mao. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly not thought of that way. No. No. I mean, percentage-wise, I mean, 
Pol Pot is probably up right, near the probably. top, percentage wise. But Ivan the sheer Terrible. numbers, sheer numbers, yes. Yeah, I mean, and today, I mean, how many Chinese citizens are are you got a billion people? You got a, you got an untapped potential in a country uh, yeah. that could be un, they could surpass the United States easily. I'm not wanting them to. I'm just no. saying, if they if they they have kind of a mixed economy with a communist government, which can't stay that way forever. No. Now, yet when it comes to people marching, what if these people were marching in the United States for for gun control or for? I think Steve Kerr would would sit there with his zipper too tight in in a, in a press conference and and not speak out in favor, which he has every right to do. Mm -hmm. Again, my goal is not to shut him up. No. Okay, my goal is to say, wait a minute. And, and forget it, the NBA doesn't need China. That's such, a, that's such uh, nonsense. No. I mean, they don't. Um, no, the, the athletes do, I, I think. When you look at the multi-million dollar shoe deals and, and all of that kind big. of stuff, I, it, it, it's the merchandising, you know? And, and that that alone, I mean, and it's really, it's the shoe companies, it's the athletic wear companies, you know. It, it, they have a it, lot of power, especially it, over yeah. youth basketball, AAU basketball and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. They, they, their sponsorships play a big role. But, I mean, the NBA can, can uh, for them to come out and muzzle their players yeah. and their coaches and general managers and say, look, you can't, you can't comment. Where were they, you know, first off, where were they on other issues? You know? Right. And I'm not saying they should muzzle people. I'm saying look at the think think of it like this. Let's say the old Soviet Union mm -hmm. did something. Or people were you know, we lived through it back in the early nineties when, when there was the the first the coup and then the, the uh where Gorbachev stepped down and, and Yeltsin took over in the early nineties. Right. Imagine the NBA saying, hey, 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 those people marching in St. Petersburg, yeah. you can't say anything in support of them. Right. I know the communists have been our enemies since 1919. Yeah. Or certainly since the end of World War II. Right. And, but, but you can't send out a tweet in 1992, right? <laughs> you know, in support of these people wanting their freedom. And, and you know, ultimately, the more freedom China gets, the more the NBA would expand into China. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, where are we at a point where you, you can trash our president and you can disagree with him all you want? Mm -hmm. I don't care who the president is. It doesn't matter who the president is. Where you can, you know, trash our laws and, and make fun of half the country and blah, blah, blah. But the second a communist government does something... yeah. Out goes the memo saying, no, 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 shut up. We can't say anything. Your freedom of speech ends the second you, you know, walk in the door here. Right. Now, let me say, I mean, the, the NBA is a private organization. True. Um, the, the owners and the coaches, I mean, they, they, are, they license their teams through the NBA. Uh, Franchises. Granted, so. it, it, I, I think there's a difference between what you say in your personal life and your professional life. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't expect to be able to, if I was working for some corporation, to go in and, and as a known employee of that corporation, start spouting off things that they disagree with. Um, I, I, as a private citizen, however, yeah. I should have that ability, and corporations have begun to cross over into that where they will find out what you're doing in your personal life, and you can get fired for tweeting in your underwear at home yeah. as, as a private citizen. You and know? where are they getting all this info? I mean, your, your yeah. info is being sold to Google. It's being sold through your phone. It's being sold through Facebook, phishing yeah. emails and things like that, and corporations have decided to enter the political world. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them have have decided when they go into the political world, I mean, they, they usually side with one party over another. Yes, they do. And they also seem to team up with China a lot. Yeah. <laughs> They're not repulsed at all by, yeah. by teaming up with uh, – the they'd rather team up with the Chinese than our own president. Right. No doubt about it. Even, even, to, do, even to do the most minuscule good mm -hmm. in this country uh, is like pulling teeth – to get them yep. to do it. And the NBA 
and the NFL, you know, there, there's a bit of a different culture that watches them, a different culture that plays there. But I just wonder, all these instant millionaires here, mm-hmm. you know, uh, who sit here and rip on this country, yet they've, they've, you know, this country has helped create yeah. the atmosphere in which they can have their wealth. Yeah, and if you were playing basketball, if you were playing basketball for for Team China, you know how much money you'd be making? Yeah, and how, none of it would be yours anyway because it's right. a collective. Right. But, but here's the other thing. Where are they speaking out against the shoe companies? The shoe companies are making shoes for two bucks and selling them for a hundred. Mm-hmm. And the athletes are just fine splitting the pot. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, it's kind of like, okay. They're not you sending know? any money back to the people who made <laughs> yeah, the shoes, yeah, I'll tell you I know. that. It's kind of like, how can I take your opinion? Maybe some of these athletes are ignorant, but you can't tell me LeBron James is ignorant. LeBron James is not a stupid yeah. guy. No. Okay, he's not dumb. I'll say whatever you want to say about him. Uh, his image is something he's crafted, mm-hmm. and he isn't an idiot. But to go, you know, send out, I, I kind of uh, let loose on Twitter on him today. Oh, did you? Not sure if he saw it. Uh, <laughs> no, I just shared it, and I uh, said... I'll ask him later. Yeah, I just shared it, and I said, you know, how can how can a guy be this ignorant? You know? Um, hmm. So I, I just think it's, uh, you know... And unfortunately, when you watch sports on TV, they have a lot of time to fill and a lot of channels and not a lot of people watching. So it becomes yeah. all about this stuff. Right. And that's all they talk about. Well, and, and let me say this. I mean, it, and this is where, you know, I, I would love for things to be made in the USA and rah, 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 all that stuff. But let me tell you, there is a difference between... I believe the companies that go to get things made in China and the companies that go to other places that are maybe up and coming like Vietnam or India or, or, or places like that, uh, that also pay low wages. People in those countries make such low wages and you're making their lives better. I mean, they're getting better paid than they would have gotten, you know, I'm sure it's not commensurate with what they would make in the USA, but for where they are in their situation, so maybe not as bad. However, in China, you've got these people who are in slave labor camps, in gulags, uh, for lack of a better word. I mean, concentration camps. You you have a, a government that has locked people in Christians, specifically uh, the Uyghurs who are Muslims, to you know, are, are another mm-hmm. group. Um, but even with a lot of the employees of these companies, they they're kind of in these communes you know where they work they live they eat you know that it, it's it's not the same thing as as doing business in in india or vietnam or bangladesh or yeah and these companies like that. could use their leverage and their dollars i think to make some changes the other way right instead of running scared now the chinese government knows that they can call up the commissioners on speed dial mm-hmm. you know hey do what we want. We're offended at at some person's tweet, yeah. and the NBA is going to kowtow. I I don't know. I just think it's kind of sick, and you know, um, I don't know how. You know, it's another thing where social media can be a real negative. I mean, the, the first thing to do is not to necessarily run out to Twitter and put out a statement that somebody can take one way or another. That's not always the smartest thing to do, right? So, you know. Jay, yes. I want to move on okay. to local stuff here. Um, walkability. We haven't spent a whole lot of time oh, oh, on walkability. Favorite. I love walking, especially this time of year, especially today when it's like 35 and <laughs> rainy. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Love it. All those walkable uh, things out there. That has become, you know, you and I are, are real big into code language. Um, yeah. when you see certain words, we know what follows. Yeah. And walkability has become, it's real big in real estate now. I don't know how many people know that, but there's like a walkability score mm-hmm. now with, with buying homes and what's walkable to. And, right. You know, I, I guess Antarctica is, uh, is their walkability standards now. <laughs> but I mean, um, 
Walkability has become code words for higher density housing. How are you going to get yep. walkability? You're going to compact things in. You're going to cram everything mm-hmm. into a square block that you could possibly can do. Absolutely. It'll be mixed use. It'll be transit. It'll be the war on cars. Yes. The war on cars. Minimizing parking, bike lanes. I mean, that's biking isn't technically walkability, but it's all part of the same. It's the same mindset. Yes. You know, that, that uh, uh, you know, you, you have to be able to do everything you can possibly do. Work, eat, um, I guess you don't need a gas station, uh, get a haircut, get groceries, um, mm-hmm. buy new underwear. Yeah, laundromats. Everything yeah. is just right crammed, you know, uh Crammed in butt cheek to butt cheek with yeah. people. It, it, it's funny you mention uh, not so much laundromats, but dry cleaning. I know there's a couple of those mixed use buildings. There's one in a diner over by Southdale, and there's another one up in Maple Grove mm-hmm. um, in that new area across from the fountains where they have the, the rentals on top, and then down below they have tied dry cleaning. Now, I wonder. You know that if if there's some sort of deal there, I mean, maybe we should look of into course. that. Where you've got the same company that's showing up on various mixed use projects. I'm sure there is. I'm glad and it's that, always, that just hit me now. It's so. always the big companies too, because they can take a short term loss. It's like right. the garbage companies. You know, when you do mass garbage producing mm-hmm. or a mass collection, I should say. Um, no, government does the garbage producing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But walkability is just one of those those words, uh, and I'm sure there. You know, then you'll see government do a study showing this or that, and, mm-hmm. and uh, but just remember when you see those words, that word I should say, yeah. walkability. What they're saying is you can take your car, push it off a cliff, watch it blow up, Thelma and Louise style, mm-hmm. and. You don't need it anymore. Right. And, and what you're referring to here, there's an article in the Min Post, yeah. uh, local amenities encourage people to walk more. Uh, and, and, and that's just kind of pushing that same mindset. Uh, they're calling about truly smart and healthy cities. <laughs> and it, you, know, it, you don't want to live in a dumb and unhealthy city. Well, why would you want to live there? <laughs> <laughs> local accessibility it is it, it's the same stuff over and over and over it's the smart growth principles that that we've discussed on this yeah. show um but that you know in walkability it has not only made you know turn the, the suburban into the urban it has on, not only compacted things if you also look at our mindset when I was a child, I was taught, look both ways before you cross the street and don't step out in front of traffic. Yeah. Now it's encouraged. If you have a crosswalk, I think state law has changed on this, you know, you can just step out. You don't have to, you know, obviously I think with traffic lights, maybe that's a little different. But, mm. um, you know, you've seen them all Pedestrians over the place. Pedestrians have the right of way no matter what. Right, exactly. And we... As drivers have to, I mean, we should be watching out for them. We don't want to hit anybody. We don't want to kill anybody. That's not what I'm saying here. But what I'm saying is, is that the onus has been put on the driver and not on the pedestrian for pedestrian safety. I'm, I'm sorry, but as a driver, it, I'm taught to be a defensive driver and I need to look out for other people so I can be safe. As a pedestrian, it's the same thing. You look out for other people so you can be safe. Yeah, and here's some news to pedestrians. If you get, uh, you end up on the other end of a car, you're the one getting hurt. <laughs> okay, yeah. not, not the person driving. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's to your benefit to look both ways. And there's a reaction thing. You can't stop a car on a dime. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, there's it, 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 depending on how fast you're going. But you're right. I mean, you are taught to, to let, tra- same thing on a bike. I mean, you know, my mom would tell yeah. me, you know, drive, don't, don't bike on the middle of the highway. Use that's your, that's your wall. She used to yeah. create a wall around our house that I could bike. <laughs> Wherever I want, I wasn't allowed to go over those things because of that reason. And I think the bigger point is if if there's an accident between a pedestrian and a vehicle, it's automatically assumed today that the vehicle is at fault. Right. You know, when, of course, that's nonsense. It is absolute nonsense. I've seen bikers run red lights. Yep. I've seen them come. There's a road 
and I know it because I take it home sometime from my sisters. I shouldn't out Champlin in Brooklyn Park here, but I'm gonna. <laughs> By where the Target campus is, if you're heading yes. south out of Champlin towards 610, yep. um, I think it's Winnetka or Broadway, I can't remember the road. Um, you end up by at the Target campus on 610 from yes. uh, from Champlin. There is a trail or a regional trail or something that goes across south of 101st Street. That I and it's, that's like a 50 mile an hour. Drive. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I not, think it's Winnetka that you're talking okay, yeah, about. Okay, it, yeah, you're not driving 30. Yeah. And I have seen people fly out of there on their 10 speeds oh. with their dorky helmets and their spandex, <laughs> their spandex, you know, with, with the with the lines on their legs, right, right. you know, flying out. And I'm like, gee whiz. I mean, you know, I mean, I've nearly hit them before. And I'm like, come on. I mean, am I, am I supposed to stop at uh-huh. this? And there's no sign. There's a sign saying that there's a crosswalk. But there's nothing saying yield to anybody, or you know, there's no light, there's no flashing yellow, mm-hmm. anything that would indicate that somebody's going to, you know, right. jump out like the cowardly lion and and you know, jump in front of. Tra- I mean, that- aren't you smart enough if you're like a professional biker to uh, uh, know that there's a, a road there that people drive fifty? Oh, on? they're not professional bikers. Well, whatever. That, that's the I thing mean, in the, in this state. I mean, you've got these people that, that dress like they're going to the Tour de France and they just got off of working at the... Yeah, with their trendy water bottle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this one filters out the carbon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've got their white claw and the other one. No. Uh, I mean, it just, I, <laughs> it's just very frustrating. I mean, it, it's, it's, it is the opposite mindset. I, mm-hmm. You know, the war on cars is very, very real. And I, I worry what um, that we, again, you, the goal should be independence. Yes. Not dependence. And to me, if I don't have a vehicle, yes, I, I can't, I have no competition in my life. I can't choose to go from one grocery store to the other. I can only go to the one next to me. Mm-hmm. I can't get my hair cut a mile away, you know, because... Right. I can't walk there in January, so I can only go to one place, you know, Moe's Barbershop. Right. And that's it. That's it. So, you know, it is dangerous, especially with free market capital, capitalism principles. You have to be able to go other places. Mm-hmm. You know, so walkability. I, I, yeah. I'll tell you what I'd like to do yeah. with that, but I can't say on the air. <laughs> now, Jay, our main thing today, yeah. it's that. Getting to, it's kind of in the middle of that time of year right now. Yes, because good old tax levies are upon us, and I'm sorry. Oh yes, you're going to get it in November. You're going to get that in the mail, and I I know uh, it, it, you're going to scratch your head as to what the hell's going on mm-hmm. uh, with with all the places that your property tax money goes, and we don't have any good news. Really, to report? No, not really. <laughs> I, 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 that's, I mean, granted, there there are bright spots, you know, uh, Oak Grove. Uh, I know when Mark Corn was mayor, uh, they were always at zero percent, and we'll see if that continues uh, under Dan an, Deno. An amazing uh, job, by yeah. Mayor Corn, without a doubt. Yeah, and I know, you know, Crystal. Uh, theirs has gone up a little bit, but it has been in taking these hidden taxes and putting them onto the tax levy so that they're they're resident facing and people can actually see what they're paying. Yeah, there's a uh, transition still going on. Yep, with that, and uh, so that they can get rid of their debt. Yeah, so there's a game plan, a very long term one. You can check out the show we just did with Nancy LaRoche and mm-hmm. Jim, Mayor Jim Adams. But they've been pretty minimal. Yeah, I mean, they've been reasonable compared to, uh, and especially when you consider the long-term implications of removing that interest mm-hmm. on on buildings oh, absolutely. and capital costs. Absolutely. So it's one thing to have a tax increase with a, with a long-term vision and a plan to get there and articulate that, and uh, mm-hmm. people can see the savings in the long term. Yeah. It's another thing to be some of these other cities and counties. I mean, I yeah. wonder to this day, and Jay, I'm gonna. I, this is very. I don't, I don't know if it's bad of me to say or what. I wonder how many people on city councils and county boards, and school districts really, truly, and honestly understand 
a budget, a levy. I mean, I really yeah. wonder how many of them read what's in their packet, listen to city staff, and that's the end yep. of what they do as far as they're making million dollar decisions here. I if you were a company, would you, <laughs> you know, is that how you'd make decisions yeah. on? Well, so and so recommends it. So, I mean, you know, you, you would never do that. You'd, well, you'd put a fine tooth, that was your money. Mm-hmm. I mean, you'd put, a fine tooth comb to all of it. Well, and we know that doesn't happen. Uh, remember, I, of course it does. When was it? Uh, we talked about it on the show before. I know. Uh, in Crystal, uh, they wanted to replace a fence right around one of the softball fields, uh, <laughs> yeah. and Council Member Julie Deschler went and checked it out, and it's like this fence is fine, you know. And they ended up not replacing it, but they were <laughs> going to because it was on the timetable to be replaced. End of life. Yeah, it was a life cycle. So that stuff gets sort of. thrown into these budgets all the time. <laughs> it's like with your capital things that, well, it's end of life. we got to replace this. Well, maybe the chair doesn't have a rip in it. Maybe, uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's some you know. Thing, I, and, and I don't want to rip on that completely because there are some things like technology, right, uh, computers updated, and things yeah. like that. Of course, um, I don't think everybody needs the latest and greatest thing, but that's just me. No. Um, there is depreciation and stuff with that, obviously. There's police cars and fire, you know, mm-hmm. the emergency vehicles. They got to work. They better work. Yep. <laughs> you know, there's some of those things are understandable, but you're right. Uh, you know, the swing set over at, uh, at uh, Twin Oak Park doesn't need an end of life, especially if it's regularly maintained. Right. I think one of the things that some, I think there's some negligence out there in, probably, you know, not you know, getting more use out of something. Right. So, but think about it around your house. Is there a timetable for your your kitchen table to be replaced? <laughs> or is it, hey, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. And, yeah. And we're going to keep it until the legs fall off or the cat scratches it or whatever. I mean, I, you know, there's, you're right. There, it, it's, it, and that's a small thing right. in the big picture. But I just wonder if I threw a budget, in front of council members A's face. Mm-hmm. I, and forget that you and I have studied this stuff for a long time and right. can speak intelligently about it. I wonder how much of that they could recite to me and tell me what this is and where it goes and what department it falls under and where the money comes from and, and why it's increasing or decreasing. We know the answer to of that. Of course we know the answer to that. Because you've done that. You have yeah. taken the budget to city councils and said, what is this? What is that? And nobody knows. No, they defer to the finance person. Absolutely. And, I mean. So they're making decisions based on the recommendations of staff and, and then running it through finance. And it they don't know. And is staff going to recommend a reduction in government? No. <laughs> of course not. No. That directive has to come from the council. It no, has to come from that. And I know this is probably a very intriguing thing to say, a little controversial. Oh, boy. But I've been thinking about this for a while. And really, I mean, it, granted, there are some city staff members that are really good and help their cities. And, and they're not trying to overtake uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. But I think there is a lot of this where the city staff really is like the deep state. You know, because Ooh, they boy. they have this attitude that, like, I was here before you, I will be here after you, I have a plan, this is where we're headed, and if you don't go along with me, I'll just wait for the next guy. No, there's definitely that. Without a doubt, there is. Or I'm an expert and you're not. Yep. Um, and maybe unintentionally a little bit, mm-hmm. talk down to people and shame them a little. Yep. I think there certainly is that. I think, again, it takes a council... Or a county board or whatever with the right mm-hmm. mindset. They if, need to find their britches. Yeah, I mean, if you, well. <laughs> Pull them they, up. But, but I mean, yeah. I, again, what they need to understand is that is that they make policy. Yeah. Not uh, somebody in a department. They don't make mm-hmm. policy for the city. They make policy for the employees. Yeah. That's why you have a boss yeah. and department head. But ultimately, the goals of the city have to lie with the council and carrying out those goals has to fall on, yeah. the, on the on the face of the staff. But you're, what you're saying is is very true. How many career appointed you know employees are not even appointed? Career employees are there at the DNR mm-hmm. and at 
<laughs> school district, blah, blah, right. blah. And, you know, I mean, the state department, go name your place. Yeah. And they've all got this pocket of people who will survive any election and, you know, will go on forever. And there's a lot of them that are more than willing to work against the elected body to, to push for their agenda. And that is the deep state or city. Uh, deep city sounds dumb, but uh, deep you know. <laughs> city set me free. All right, I won't say wow. anymore. I don't. Uh, but but yeah, and and so if you're elected and you sit your butt in a seat somewhere and you're making, you're voting on something and you haven't figured out all of the pros, all of the cons, all of the information that will inform you on what is best for your residents, then shame on you. Yeah. Shame on you. If you let some staff member guide your decisions and you take the sales pieces and you run with it and you haven't done your own homework, then then shame on you. Well, but, you know, again, that's where it's up to citizens to hold people accountable. And right. Run for office, get on these boards, all the same things that we say all the time. Yeah. You know, but let's let's... Yeah. But that's the problem. Yeah. I mean, they haven't. And, and, and that's why we end up with these tax increases like this. I mean, yeah, let's talk about Detroit Lakes. Let's start there. We'll start out state. We'll work in. Okay? <laughs> so we'll start with Detroit Lakes. The council approves a preliminary tax levy of $5.75 million for 2020. Now, we should say, it, I, I know we have some previous podcast episodes about this. Um, the cities have to turn in a preliminary tax levy, which it's not finalized, but that means they can't go over it. They can come in under it, but they're usually pretty close projections because they've already run a lot of the numbers. Now, those projections need to be in by um, uh, September, what 30th. September 30th, and then uh, they vote on those preliminary levies to make them official after they have a truth and taxation hearing uh, in early December, and then they have the vote after that truth and taxation hearing in the middle of December when yeah. everybody else is worried about Christmas shopping and, and not paying attention. Yeah, technically they have till December 31st. Yes. Actually. They usually don't. They, don't, they do leave that. some room in case there's some discrepancy, and, and some do go to a late December meeting, but most get settled at the first December meeting. Yeah, typically the first meeting in December. I have seen it go to the second one before, uh, especially if they feel they can't pass something or enough residents complain. But, but usually by then, they've already done the work. They've already agreed behind the scenes. It's very rare for that to happen. Yeah. So ultimately, um, you've got September, and it doesn't matter if it's a two-year budget. Mm -hmm. Every year a levy quote unquote has to be passed, submitted to the county. The county is the collector. Yes. That's the statement you get in November. And then um the statement in March is reflected of the December. I know it's a little confusing, but yeah. but, but they but you're right, Jay, they set a max levy. Yes. This is the maximum we are gonna take. Um and there are no levy limits right now. Nothing right. imposed by the state of Minnesota. And I wish the state of Minnesota would propose a levy limit on themselves rather than everybody that they can't control. They'll come up with state franchise fees. You yeah, better beware. something like that. Uh, but yes, okay, so Detroit Lakes, uh, preliminary tax levy of $5.75 million. That's a 4.5% increase over the 2018 levy. Um, of note, they also did pass a bu preliminary budget for 2020 of $34 million and change. Holy cow. So, yeah. That, that's a big budget for a city that size, isn't it? A Crystals comes in around, around 13, 13. I want to say. Are you sure that's not the county? Oh, my uh, goodness. The council also set a preliminary oh. 2020 budget of $34,993,293 on Tuesday. So only $5 million of that comes from the levy? Or is that the levy increase? Um... Yeah, that sounds like that's the levy. Boy, they must get a lot of free money from They somewhere. must. Um, and they still have to have a huge increase. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 4.5%. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So even cities that, uh, even places that don't have a, uh, a uh, 
you know, a lot of cities rely heavily on their levy yeah. and a lot less on everything else. So, right. Um, interesting. Boy, yeah. that, I mean, that's still, that's just a ton. Well, like we saw, what, in Big Lake, it was 40% was the levy and, and 60% was uh, everything else? It's something like that. They were, yeah. pretty, they were pretty close to 50-50. I mean, it really depends on whether or not you have franchise fees, whether or not you own a liquor store mm-hmm. or a golf course, what you collect in permits, which I don't consider revenue. Right. I, mean, I don't know how you project that. I think it gives incentive for the government to go out and charge and charge and find things to charge for and right. you know, jack up the cost of that to the point where it's a hundred dollars to buy a key for something. I mean, it, it is pretty crazy. Uh, all the places, and it's pretty shocking. All the places that they they kind of dip their hands into. Right. Um, you know, and we talked uh, when. Uh, uh, running for a Ramsey City Council when Dan was on the show, uh, Dan Specht, remember we talked yes. about how one of his ideas was to create some sort of handbook for companies of what to expect. Yeah. And, so there's no surprises at the door. Right. And I'm thinking, that should have been something somebody did 50 years ago. I mean, it's, I'm thinking, what a great idea. Why didn't I come up with it? Yeah. And in reality, I mean... Every new business should have that. I mean, you can find out what kind of taxes you have to pay or what kind of um, – the state has a pretty decent website about sales tax, and they have a login that kind of mm-hmm. covers everything where you can put in your, your uh, gross sales and your taxable sales, and they'll do the calculating for you. It's actually kind of handy. Uh, local government, it's no. Uh, we're going to – Put you on city water, we're going to charge you three grand for it or something. I mean, it's just all the permits you have to have, requirements you have to have to open, building, uh, uh, you know, specifications. I mean, it's... It is kind of crazy, but it all, it all again, it, there's a mm-hmm. revenue angle to all of that. And that's not the property tax levy. Right. So what other cities do we have here, Jay? That, well. Uh, or counties or whatever we're talking about. We'll here. start with cities. We'll go into counties, and then maybe we'll bring, bring things a little closer to home. And we'll, we'll see here. Uh, let's talk about Forest Lake City Council here. Um, they had, at its September 23rd meeting, unanimous, unanimously, yeah, I can't say it, unanimously, of course, there's oh, no, yeah, of course no dissent on these things. Again, keeping in mind, they probably met in July and August. Maybe June as They've well. already had their minds yeah. made up. They've already done their negotiating. Yep. The first time you hear of the levy <laughs> will be they the night that they pass the preliminary and, Right. Levy. They put hours and hours and hours and hours yeah, into why it. Why isn't this meeting in June? Right. You well, know? Exactly. Well, I mean, and that's the thing. You guys out there in listener land have to go to the work sessions that happen over the summer months because that's where they're going to start talking about this and then you will be able to more effectively communicate with your city council people and your neighbors to tell them what's going on yeah be careful on that though because specifics major specifics are often not known Mm -hmm. until right before this presentation right uh you they will talk about what department needs are what Mm -hmm. the long-term stuff is blah 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 but you're not going to get a comprehensive report until they oh, get no. here. My question is, why not in June have a public hearing saying, what What are you willing to pay, yeah. your taxpayer A? Right. You know, well, I don't think this is it. Yeah, um, I, uh, at its September 23rd meeting, the Forest Lake City Council unanimously approved a preliminary 2020 levy of approximately $11.15 million. That is uh, an 8.59 percent increase oh, over the previous year and i the, the whole statement we're looking at how hometown mm-hmm. the forest lake times is where this is originated yes um look at the next sentence there about the administrator making 25 grand a year uh <laughs> stress that a big chunk would be new debt service for bonding issued to cover roads uh, without, you know, blah, 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 blah. So in other, let me translate that. We spent a bunch of money we don't have. Mm-hmm. Now we have to pay that back plus the interest. Yes. This is where it is. This is what cities like Crystal are trying to eliminate. Right. You know, that this, I mean, 
to have a bond and then a big tax increase on top of that. Almost 3% came from that bond right. levy and, for the roads. And here's the yeah. thing. If Forest Lake has to pay all these bonds, how are they ever going to switch mm-hmm. to paying cash for this stuff? It'll take them 20 years to change course or 10 or whatever. Right. It, it just makes that transition you know, much, much longer and much tougher. And uh, they talk about, th- this is another thing that drives me crazy, mm-hmm. this average home. Right. This, I mean, the reality is, first off, homeowners aren't the only people paying this stuff. I never see a business or industrial or agricultural thing when they right. do this. And remember, we're only tra- talking about one chunk of the taxes, mm-hmm. the city portion. Right. Not the county portion, not, not the, the school schools, district, not, not your your uh, watershed yeah, I, or your. I think they still have the Met Council taxes there. Is I, that still Anoka County for us? Uh, Washington no, that's, County, maybe. Is it Washington or Ramsey? Lionel Lake says is in Ramsey. It could be in Washington. It, I don't think they're quite in Chisago County. No, so yeah, they're not. They might be. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Washington County. Yep. Oh, it is Washington. It is Washington yeah. County. Yep. Yeah. So I mean. You know, you're looking at if you've got to service debt like this, and what do you want to bet for road road costs, uh, which I'm sure aren't going to be all be paid for in one year. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, it is big time. It is big time money. Right. Absolutely. And, and here's another thing. Yes. This is another thing. This guy says we only surface, resurface, or fix our roads through franchise fees and state shared revenues. What? Mm. Uh, no, you did it through debt. <laughs> yeah, that's what it says here. They they got to pay back the interest on the bonds. So then you know. Um, so that's not true. Uh, I, I I don't understand it. They're they're talking out of both sides of their belly buttons here. I don't I don't. <laughs> well, I mean, he goes on to say, until today or until this budget's approved, we will not. And do not put any property tax into roads at all. That's an unusual thing for municipalities to do, but yet they just, they're proposing to do it. Right. But, so but, they're saying they haven't done it yet, but once this budget is passed, they're going to start doing it. Well, if they've already written the bonds and people have bought those bonds and they've gone and done the work and began to resurface the roads, how else are you going to pay for it? Well, you're not. It's the. I, Money will have to go away for the next project, but how are you going to save for that without huge taxes? Well, no, that's what I mean. I mean, you've already written the bonds. How do you pay those bondholders back? You do it through the general fund servicing the debt. It's the only way to do it. That's that's my point. Yeah, and and I, like I said, that also hinders your ability to save. If a new council comes in and wants to switch course, they have to pay these bonds off first. Mm-hmm. At the same time, try to save. For the next projects, they don't have to bond again. Right. I mean, you're looking at a 20-year cycle to turn that around. Yeah. So feel good because you guys are paying an extra 3% in taxes a year just to service the debt yeah. on these roads. Yeah. When <laughs> if you had had the cash ahead of time, you wouldn't be paying the extra yeah. 3%. It would be saved. I'm guessing that the roads didn't all deteriorate in six months. No, exactly. It's, <laughs> they, it's over time. They, you know, they, it's a big sinkhole and everything. Yeah. <laughs> just... <laughs> the quicksand over there on 35 in Maine. <laughs> I don't know what happened. There was a town here. Now, now she's all gone. Yeah. New meaning to a ghost town. <laughs> yes. Oh. Okay. Now, no. I, I just want to say to put yeah. this in real world numbers here. I, I know percentages are what we deal with. That kind of tends to blow people's mind. But just because it's a small number, I, I think I can say this. For, I know you don't like the median home, you know, for a $250,000 home. I mean, that's Which still... nobody has. Right. That's an increase of $43.80. And yeah, it's, uh, just in to, the city portion. Right, just in the city portion. And $87.60 for something that's a half a million dollars. So you're already paying... Three grand, four grand a month on your mortgage if you have a five hundred thousand dollars. Right, house. but here's the thing. I mean, they say okay, it's only fifty bucks or whatever. But what happens when it goes up fifty bucks next year, and fifty bucks a year after that, right. and fifty bucks a year after that? All of a sudden, you're paying a hundred and fifty dollars more than you were previously. I mean, it accumulates year after year after year after year, and they want you to concentrate on the year at hand but they don't want to talk about how they've increased taxes for the last three four five ten years and i would say when you look at 
an eight and a half percent increase in their budget. I mean, that if they do that every year, they're going to double their budget in twelve years right. or less, actually. I mean, if you look at ten point two six million to eleven point one five million, look at the jump there. Mm-hmm. I mean, at what point in in three four years they're going to be at fifteen? Right. I mean, they're they're heading in that direction, and I, I'm sitting here listening to the comments of the city council people going, "Me, you are cl- you have no idea how to stop this." Right. You know, you're just you're just gurgling talking points. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to fix. Our neighbors are doing this. Or we have to get in line. Or, or you know, um, we're mindful of, of uh, people out there. Uh, you know, the old George H.W. Bush, I care. Yeah. I care. <laughs> I care. Wouldn't be prudent. You know, that's what this is. I care. I care. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now what, oh. other, what other places in our glorious tell you, state? Tell you what, as long as we're out there, uh, we'll bring things into the city. So let's talk about St. Louis County a little oh, bit. Gee. Yeah. Uh, they approved a 2020 property tax levy. Uh, well, you know, not the final one. This is, that's the way that this is titled. And I wonder if they have an HRA and a transit tax. They probably have no. both. Or does the city of Duluth run transit there? They probably run transit there, I would think, because it's just Duluth, and it doesn't go to, like, two harbors or any of that. But hard to say. Uh, I, I think it is Duluth, now that I, I think about it, because they have... Uh, what if they get County 8 or anything like that? Well, that's they, another show. They do have, like, a transit authority-type yeah. thing in Duluth. Well, Duluth, so. the city of Duluth has a transit authority. I'm just wondering if there's anything beyond that. With the county, I mean that's a big county. Well, but it's a sparse county outside yeah, of Duluth. It is. It, it okay. things are pretty far away from each other. You know? Yeah, I mean uh, Voyager National Park is a little far from Duluth. Right. So. <laughs> well, that's, that's I think <laughs> that's bit. I think that's Kuchiching County. I don't Kuchiching. know Kuchiching County. I don't think I love that's, that name. Yeah. All right. Anyways, St. Louis County uh, approved a maximum property tax levy for 2020 at $145.56 million. Oh, God. It's a 6.45 increase. $145 million? Yeah. $145.5 million. Holy cow. 6.45 increase. Whew. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. I can't believe it's that much. It's crazy out there. Yeah. Now, I'm sure they're law enforcement. I'm sure that there's a lot of areas that don't have a police department. And St. Louis County probably is the major uh, law enforcement uh, uh, entity of a lot of the yeah. area outside of Duluth. But yeah, that with could the exception be. Of, of he's Hibbing in Virginia, and are they yep. in St. Louis County? I, I, yeah, I, think I believe so. so. I, I don't, don't think, think that's, that's Itasca Lake. County or, either. It's not Itasca for sure. No, Lake would be the other direction. Right, yeah. Lake's the other direction. Yep. Uh, I think the whole Iron Range is in St. Louis County. Oh, so, real? Okay. Yeah. Well, boy, I mean, that's. Yep. I, well, I'd like to know Babbitt what there's. and embarrass. Well, what are they spending on? What are they I'd spending $145 million yep. dollars on? Well, let's see. I mean, um, I know there's some state mandates and Duluth's a big yeah. city, but, I mean, come on here. That I mean, it's not like they're, they're uh, really, they got a million people in that county. Well, here's what they said. Here's what they said. An increased investment in public works equipment as well as adjustments for higher material costs for salt, aggregate and dust control solutions. These are needed expenses that cannot be funded by transportation sales tax revenue. Hmm. Number two. Why not? Oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Salt and dust control. I, I used to live on a dirt road growing up. They used to put oil down on it to keep the dust down. Well, I don't think they can do that anymore, can they? Probably not. Probably I mean, not. They'd probably say it runs into the water runoff. Those days or don't come back. <sighs> All I, right. I think though that that uh, here here's my question. Yeah. If, you, if you don't have an increase, do we get a get a refund? Well, you, it, <laughs> why do we need? Well, okay. So the increased investment in public works equipment and adjustments for higher material costs for the salt and blah 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 blah. Well, adjustments for higher material costs so salt apparently costs more than it used to 
Uh, There's alternatives to salt, like sand. Yeah. Although, let me tell you, it, 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 this is maybe mostly in Duluth, but I, I would also say, like, uh, going up the North Shore on that Highway 2, lots of twists and turns and stuff like that. I mean, you want to make sure that the ice is melted on those roads because it can be very, very dangerous. Uh, no, I agree um, with that. Although, when it gets too cold, the, the salt doesn't work anyway. So, I don't know. <laughs> Maintaining investment in public safety and human services, including programs that address substance use and mental health and services for vulnerable adults and children. How come it's always an investment? I'd like to know. Well, why is mm-hmm. it? An, why do they call it an investment? Well, to me, an investment is what's in my IRA that I'm watching grow. Right. Uh, I don't watch government dollars grow. Because if they called it a spending spree, people would actually take notice. Yeah, they might. So so we're yeah. back to the uh, mm-hmm. Frank Luntz group uh, words that work. Or we're back to right. to the the uh, focus groups and that kind of crap. What what do people respond to? How many how many how many uh, buttons do they press in, in in thirty seconds to to show how much they love that wording? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, number three: increased health care costs for wages and staff. Hmm. Or, and wages for staff. Yes. Well, of course, everybody. So, yeah. And various areas of increased costs or decreased revenues, such as decrease in minerals royalties. That's because they won't let them mine up exactly. there. Uh, increased investment in the depot. Why? And general inflationary pressures. Now let me the, the Duluth Depot. It, it's a it's a nice museum. It's fun to go look at all the old trains and all that stuff, but. Does it really need any more? I mean, it. I. I don't know. It's. <laughs> it is what it is. And I. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, Anyways, here's what they say. Anytime we increase the levy, it's a difficult decision because we know it affects our residents and businesses. God, we're says back to this. Commissioner Beth Olson. We're back to the same chair crap of we the just. Board's finance same, committee. Same crap we just read in Forest Lake. <laughs> but. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but means forget what I just said. Right. That that part was meant to make you feel good. Mm. But an increase is necessary to deliver the services our citizens need and deserve. These investments align with the county's strategic priorities and with the priorities expressed by our residents in a survey conducted earlier this year. That survey, let me guess some of the questions. Are you happy with county services? <laughs> yes or no? Yeah, can you even name Don't any? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can you name who's on? Name your county board uh, representative. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I, I mean, we're... Looking at what two point two to public works, two point oh percent to public safety, one percent to public health and human services, and one point two five to general government on that one. Nice stuff. That's great. I we love also it. so think about it this way: if you're getting an increase like that from St. Louis County, and mm-hmm. you live maybe in Duluth, or you live in Hibbing or Virginia, or you live in uh, one of the other two harbors, one of the other cities up there. Uh, you're getting an increase like that from your county. Check out what your city's doing. Check out your school district. They might have a levy yeah. coming up, a vote coming up. You're going to get hit from. I mean, just think if, if all three of them raise taxes 5%, yeah. that's a 15% increase in your property taxes. Yes. If if I if I took Oof. 15% more out of your paycheck at work, would you would you yell and scream? Mm hmm. I would. If you took 0.1%, I would be the first one. Absolutely. So, where are we going next? Where's the tour around Minnesota here? Where are we going? How about we settle down right where we're sitting? Oh, God. Let's uh, let's talk about St. Louis Park a little bit. We need to come up with a song for them. Yeah? St. Louis Park and New Hope Get Married (laughs) or something. Yeah. Uh, It's it's no good. Um, So... Their document is a little more confusing. Yes, I would agree with that. Uh, they they printed an executive summary, and they put their what they wanted to do in the form of a question. <laughs> well, they're playing Jeopardy. <laughs> well, maybe that's it. What is the tax increase? <laughs> 
<laughs> Does the city council desire to set the 2020 preliminary property tax levy at thirty four thousand nine hundred eighty five? Thirty four million. Thirty four million nine hundred eighty five thousand five hundred twenty one dollars, which is a five point six one change, not increase. They say change, but it's an increase over the well, twenty nineteen like, final I'm look, property. I'm, tax I'm looking level. for hope now. If we saw right. change. I'm looking for hope. <laughs> There's no hope in St. Louis Park. No. Oh, there is none. Um, so they asked that as a question, and I don't know why they asked that as a question. I don't know either, but, but I know that it all in lies, once again, where have we heard this from? The strategic priority. Consi- you know, Jay, yeah. you and I do consulting work. We need to come up with a strategic. <clears throat> we need to um, be in competition with whoever they're hiring to mm. come up with us. Right. Because whoever's doing it is just copying it from one city to another. Yes. They all have a strategic plan. And the plans are all very similar. Yes. Yeah. Almost Oddly like, enough, they are. Almost, I mean, if I were a teacher and 30 students wrote the same thing using the same words, wouldn't I be a little suspicious that they all copied each other? Yeah. So why is it when I look at these cities... <laughs> Nobody sitting there going. They all copied each other. They all, they all hired Billy to write it they because all hired, he doesn't have a life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, he's gonna steal his lunch money if he doesn't. Yeah, uh, Jerkwater uh, USA Incorporated is who they hired. <laughs> You'll happy to know that this budget, St. Louis Park, is committed to being a leader in racial equality and inclusion. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you put that in a budget, but that's there. Well. That's priceless. They are. That's hard to quantify. They are committed to continue to lead an environmental stewardship. They are committed to providing a broad range of housing and neighborhood orientated development. They should be committed. (laughs) St. Louis Park is (laughs) committed to providing a variety of options for people to make their way around the city comfortably. Oh. Safely and Hey, I make my I make so, my way around the city comfortably. It's called air conditioning or heat depending on the time of year. Oh, yeah, that's, I can adjust the levels. It well, works yeah. out really well. <laughs> yeah. St. Louis Park is committed to creating opportunities to build social capital. Through community and social capital. I don't even know if I know what that means. I usually can pick apart this government jargon, but that... Social capital? Social capital. Huh. Is that like a a capital that talks a lot? I don't know. (laughs) I I wonder if that's like community centers and places for people to get together, parks. I, I don't know. That's... You know what? Social capital. How about that somebody's backyard? How about that? You know, it, go ahead and keep reading. I'm going to see if I can find out. What well, I love is. how they have their discussion, um, which I'm sure, you know, they go on and on about local government aid, so on and so forth. Um, they have a little chart here on their general fund, and <clears throat> uh, it's actually going up almost two million dollars. Wow, two million. Wow. Oh, social capital. This is the first time I've ever heard of this. We should, Jay, I want to mention one more thing. Yes. In their total spending, $3.8 million of it is debt service. Wow. $3.8 million. It's a lot of debt. So that's, that's not the debt. No, that's, that's the, the service. service on the debt. That's just paying the interest. Yeah. So $3.8 million. Well, in interest service. in any. Uh, Overruns principal or anything payments, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is social capital? According to Robert Putnam, who I have no idea who he is, social capital refers to connections among individuals, social networks, and the norms of reciprocity and trustworthiness that arise from them. According to Putnam and his followers, social capital is a key component to building and maintaining democracy. That is a key I would like to throw away. I have no I, idea what you I, just said. I still don't know what I said, yeah. Uh, Interpreter. And why does it take money? Well, that, that becomes the, the excuse to spend money. I yeah. mean, the, the, the fancy words and things that somebody's going to put together that all sound good on a piece of paper that are hard to disagree with. 
you know, it's hard to say, oh, yeah, we, we, we want people to gather and get together and know your neighbor. Yeah. Okay, great. No, and I can do that is. for free. Yeah, that's what it is. It's I got a opportunities phone. for, <laughs> yeah. we've, we've talked about this term a couple of times, placemaking. Yeah. Where you. I, I thought that was create, what a kicker you right. was. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what you put in your chest, yeah. a placemaker? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it is. It's creating all these places where people can get together and creating opportunities, whether it's the, the art fair on Tuesday or the, you know. It, but here's the thing, yeah. too, Jay. Why doesn't that stuff pay for itself? Why don't vendors and things like that, uh, you know, uh, why doesn't that uh, – uh, Mitigate some of the costs, like it, because politicians make terrible business people. Yeah, I, I know, but I mean, like I was thinking of something like the Crystal Frolics. I mean, right? The vendors and the uh, uh, rides and things like that. They they take up some of the cost of the police and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. I mean, I know people on the Frolics committee still, even though I don't live in Crystal anymore. I mean, the idea that the whole thing is is in the budget somewhere is <laughs> preposterous. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, the softball team's paying to play, and, you know, there's all different kinds of ways that a uh, – and I think they are valuable, by the way. I don't want to yeah. diminish um, a fair or, or uh, some kind of gathering or some kind of uh, thing where people with the same skills, uh, like uh, concerts and things like that that we've had before mm – -hmm. Uh, I think those things are are cool and they're fun, right? And I don't want to diminish that. At the same time, um, they're not an excuse to jack up taxes two million bucks, right? So, oh goodness, uh, let, let's look at a couple of counties here. Let's look at Anoka County, and we'll we'll mirror that with Hennepin County quick. Um, the preliminary property tax levy for 2020 approved by the Anoka County Board September 24th is 4.97% higher than this year's levy. The proposed certified levy totals about $143.3 million, up from the 2019 figure of $136.5 million. So that's almost 5% increase there. However, they do say that the staff had originally proposed an 8.99% oh, levy increase. God. So I guess this is still called a cut in, in government speak. No, let me translate yes. what happened. Okay. The staff wanted a 5% increase. You know, you never, no, not, staff, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're I never gonna you're going to get more than you asked for. You yeah. know, Jay, if you're a kid and you ask your dad for you know 10 bucks to go to the arcade, he's not going to give you 20 Mm -hmm. Okay, my dad sure huh? as hell wasn't going to. Right. Um, if I asked him for twenty, though, if I wanted ten, mm -hmm. and I asked, I had asked my dad for twenty. Yeah. He would never give it to me, of course not. But he had a crumpled up ten dollar bill somewhere. Yeah. And you know, I want to go look at baseball cards or blah blah blah. blah. All right, all right. What do you need? Ten bucks. Well, I needed five. I'll tell you what. I'll give you five. All yeah. right. That's what's going on here. The staff wants a five percent increase, but they know if they ask for five, they're probably going to get three. Right. So we're going to ask for nine, make it outrageous, mm -hmm. and then settle for five, and that's a victory all the way around. Now the right. council can go, hey, hey, look, we cut half of the money that they wanted, or the, the board, I should say, and the staff yeah. gets the 5% money that they wanted in the first place. Oh, That's the game going yeah. on. By the way, why is it staff requesting it? Why doesn't the county board say, look, here's what we're willing to increase it, or here's what we're willing to spend? Mm -hmm. Why aren't they setting the parameters? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why that's happening. But, again, you know, you're looking at another increase. And it's about the same. I you thought know? this was a red area too. I thought I thought they were conservative uh, with money. I thought so too. I, mean, I, I just, I, just I, I drove through there. I thought it, I thought I saw red somewhere. Yeah. I mean, I work in a no. Was it a Target? Yeah. <laughs> it might have been. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> they're not increasing all their prices. I can tell you that. <laughs> Somehow yeah. they're making it. Well, I mean, they are, they're blaming it on unfunded mandates and human services, um, which have totaled $12 million over the past five to six years. Okay, um, out of an $140 million budget, yeah. $12 million over five years? Well, that's part of it, you know. Um, that's true. At the same time, um, 
that's not a large percentage yeah. of the total money, and health and human services is one part yeah. of what they do, but there's law enforcement, there's courts, there's assessing. Yeah. There's a million different things that counties are involved in. Transit, some are needs, mm-hmm. some are wants. 9 per- 9.9% increase in health care premiums, 3% salary increase for the employees. Well, yeah, that's not yeah. sustainable. Did I just use the S word? Yes, you did. I'll have to bleep that in editing. <laughs> <laughs> Not the four-letter S word, the no. like 12-letter one. Yes. Yes, that should be right up there with all the words you're not allowed to say, <laughs> for sure. So, yeah, I mean, it, that is big, you know? Um, and, and I think that, I don't know, it, it's just not. For for a place where you you think that they're a lot more careful with that kind of stuff, it still it's a big increase. No, it's year after year. And after year. And, and they even say in the article, um, so I, I'm, I've moved on, but someone in the article was saying that uh, when you couple that with school uh, taxes and this and that, that it it gets to be big, and it's true. Um, let's look at this with Hennepin County quick. Um, yeah, I just think. With all the loons on that county, oh, and they pretty much had about the same increase. Yeah. Um, so they approved a maximum um, $868.96 million uh, property tax levy, which is a 4.75 increase from 2019. $800 million? Yeah. And by the way... They only get, I know counties in particular, mm-hmm. Hennepin County, only about 40% of their money comes from the levy. Yeah. So they're spending over $2 billion. Oh, yes. No, the week before, Hennepin County Administrator David Huff presented a $2.5 billion oh. proposed 2020 budget. <laughs> yep. Yep, you're right on. Huh. Actually, I was low. Yeah. <laughs> no chance to win both showcases there. <laughs> Yeah, Holy but you didn't smoke. go over, so you don't go home yeah, empty-handed. Not, That's all right. See what the other person has to say. And right, that they get they get Ramsey County or something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, it's going to the Housing and Redevelopment Authority levy. Uh, you know, the regional. Oh, are regional these separate? Railroad. Yeah. The, yes, uh, there's three levels. Yeah, that's right. So the 2020 budget, twenty million dollars for the authority for the uh, um, HRA. HRA, yeah. They approved a $16.5 million maximum for the property tax levy on the HRA. And then for the region, Regional Railroad uh, Authority levy, that is a maximum property tax levy of $30 million on top of that. So you're looking at $30 million, plus you're looking at uh, $20 million, which is $50 million. Million plus the $800 million, eight, right? Eight point six hundred million. Can you say eight point six hundred? I don't know if that works that way. But that puts it over nine hundred thousand dollars from the county. No, nine hundred million. Or million. Sorry. Yeah. yeah nine. <laughs> yes, nine hundred million. Sorry. God. Yes. Yeah. That's almost. And we, and then, that's that's darn close to a billion dollars. And that's just property tax revenue. Remember, yeah. they're spending two and a half billion. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so they're going to take almost half, not not even really when you think about the, the half a billion there. They, they take not very much from the people, and they get a whole bunch from... The state, the feds, yeah. charges for services, blah, 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 blah. Oh, my I goodness. think uh, yeah. they get a good chunk from the state. Yep. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, so, yeah, the, those are all just great, aren't they? I, I just... I, Lovely beyond belief. Yeah. Well, uh, as long as we're in Hennepin County, you know, uh, what, why don't we? I think that it would be good to read this because it makes me want to move to this city. <laughs> I know. We, we tend to pick on this city a little bit. It's not that they don't I wasn't, have it covered. I wasn't not wondering where you were going. <laughs> you, you, we've done this long enough. You know. <laughs> oh. You know, let me just say something yeah. first. How ironic that the city we're about to talk about has the name Hope in their name. <laughs> I mean, ponder that for a second. Yes, yes. 
Okay. Now, let me let me preface this. Most of these places that we've been reading about f- figured it out sometime in September what their maximum levy was going to be. Oh, New Hope had it figured out by mid-August. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't much to talk no, about. No, there wasn't yes. much to talk about. They, just August 19th. They, they uh, sat there, uh, they uh, ate their bologna sandwich, yeah. and they said, well, let's do it, boys. <laughs> <laughs> they had to, somebody had to elbow Elder to wake up. And, yeah, all of them. Uh, okay, so the preliminary 2020 budget for the city of New Hope was presented by staff at the city council work session. And then they presented the general fund budget is $15,410,550, which is an increase of $1,186,438, or 8.3%. Uh, approximately seven hundred thousand dollars of the increase is in expenses for adding the the new swimming pool facility. Yes, it's their uh, bonding and their, yeah. their debt service. <laughs> so, uh, although the total general fund expenses increased by more than a million, they are largely offset by in- what? Sorry, I know dead air, but that was for dramatic. That was a dramatic pause, is what that is. Although total general fund expenses increased by more than a million, I think this is meant to be a joke, so you laugh when I'm done. They are largely We're talking o- about a new hope. They are now. largely offset by one million forty nine thousand nine hundred fifty five of increased revenue from pool operations, local government aid, building permits, and franchise fees. Oh. So we found new ways to get money from people. Yes. So that offsets all the money that we're spending. Right, right, right. Oh, boy. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. Um, this is this represents last year's. Did you see where it says here? Last year's 18% yes. was the increase. It was. You know, New Hope has raised, I'm going to guess, probably 60%. Over the last five or six years, yeah, something like that. I. It is time for you people in New Hope to get off your dead arses and do something about this. Mm-hmm. This this meeting in December, their lie in taxation hearing that bill, the yeah, people would be hanging off the rafters in that meeting. I, what is it with this? Upset. What is I, it with this city? I don't know. How many times are you going to get shot in the head before you fight back? And I'll tell you uh, something else. You know what I'd do if I were on New Hope City Council? What? The second I hear a budget proposal, it's not only dead on arrival, it's dead before anybody speaks, <laughs> before anybody writes a number down. Yeah. That thing is going to rot like <laughs> bad beef at John Elder's colon, okay? <laughs> oh, That's what it's going to do. <laughs> I wouldn't even think about voting for it. Uh, and where are, where are the people on the council questioning this? And, and all you're going to get from this council is the same robotic thing mm-hmm. you hear every single time. Every effort was made to keep the general fund right. levy low to help offset the impact. You call this low? Yeah, this is not low. It, oh, it's low, all right. How can, how can you go up 10 15% a year and call that low? Well, what would high be? <laughs> 90? Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's not it's not as it's not as high as last yeah. year. No kidding. That's that's an 8% cut now. That yeah. You just wait. Uh, I want to watch that meeting. Yeah. I want to see if anybody tries to make the case that they're making cuts. Yeah. A 10.42 increase. I mean, it's sad that that looks small compared to last year. And and the previous years. Yeah. They've all been double digits. Oh. It, it's crazy. I I don't even understand New Hope and what you're doing. You guys. No, no, look, look, look. Not only do they have no idea what they're doing, they're blatantly, it, it, it's, I don't know. I, I just All I know is, Jay, if, 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 if you and I lived in New Hope yeah. and, and we, we crystalled the city, uh, you know, like we did for a long period of time. Yes. These people, okay, would not be there anymore. I can tell you that for sure. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you they'd hate us so much, okay, that that they would uh, 
they would go bat crazy at, yes. the, at the mention of our names <laughs> because I, you and I have blogged about this city. Yeah, we've slammed this city, and and we, nobody comes out of the woodwork. Right. Says you know what. I don't know what's going on, but I know these bozos don't have a clue of what they're doing. Mm-hmm. They fall asleep during the meetings. They look like they're they're uninspired and lethargic. And I, I don't know how anybody takes it in that city. I'd yeah. be embarrassed that this is my city council. Well, here's a spoiler. Okay, there's going to be some open seats. Kathy Hempkin's not going to run again, yeah. so I hear. So there'll be a mayor seat up for grabs. You see, she um, likes to hear herself talk. All right, there's so. going to be a couple other seats up for grabs. So where are you now? Is the time to plan. You're right. I you mean, know, now is the time to plan. It, you know, and, and there's a reason, New Hope, that you show up on everybody else's. When, when they say, hey, here's what other cities are doing around us uh, to make their tax increases look better, you're not number one on the list because it's a good thing. <laughs> like, you're yeah, all cheered taxes, oh, we're number one no, ta- you don't taxes, want to do that yeah it's like golf okay you don't want you don't want a triple bogey no okay no i think that i think though that they like got certificates of, like of, of achievement hey we made number one and probably and, yeah. uh they don't realize their, why that was but it's on their wall in the in the council meeting room. but let me tell you this year there is a new City taking the cake. Oh boy, New Hope's getting knocked off. New Hope is is like number two. Oh, you're number two. That that's uninspired. Oh. Uninspired. St. Paul City Council approves up to thirty five million dollar increase to twenty twenty tax levy. That is a twenty two percent increase. And I would like to say. The mayor there is as radical as the mayor in Minneapolis. Oh, I've heard And bit. this this proposal far outdid his proposal that he made a few <laughs> months ago. Yeah. And people thought that was nuts. Right. Mayor uh, I can't think, Carter, I think his name is. I mean, his proposal was a humongous increase, and this went beyond it. They Mount Everest did it. Yeah. <laughs> if that's they a did. word. Yeah, I like that. They Mount Everest did it. <laughs> Well, I'm trying here. Uh, no, l- let me read this. Uh, this Where is, are you reading from, Jay? So um, we TwinCities.com. Yeah, we source our work here. TwinCities.com. Okay. Um, this is from Council Member Dai Tao. Today's vote to set the max levy is the most responsible thing that I can do at this moment. Boy, I'd like to see what her, her definition of irresponsible is. Yeah. Uh, in the world as it should be, I would love to have enough funding so we could have an anti-gun violence strategy and invest in shots potter and all the things I really want. Oh, you know what shots potter is? No, I don't. That's uh, a cross between shot put and putting. Oh, is that what <laughs> yeah. shots potter? You take a shot put it... and then a putt. Oh, I, th- I, I, I thought it, I thought it was like pottery with a oh. shotgun or <laughs> free cleanse for everyone. Maybe that's what it is. It's, <laughs> you know, uh, it, so yeah. she's lamenting that they don't a twenty two percent increase is not it's enough. It's not enough. This her. is the most responsible thing I can do at the moment. But I want all this other stuff. I mean, listen to this. I mean, and I'm going to read this again. In the world as it should be, I would lo- I would love to have enough funding so we could have an anti gun. F- violent strategy and invest in shots potter and all the things i really want <laughs> merry christmas to you Daitao. <laughs> merry christmas i mean probably they don't have i, I would imagine she's buddhist so that's probably I don't know. highly insensitive but merry christmas Dai Tao, i think i had that at a chinese restaurant last week <laughs> oh boy <laughs> Is that D-I-E? Is that uh, spelled D-I-E? Yeah. No. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, D-A-I. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, there were two council members that voted against it. Yeah, they but, only wanted uh, 19%, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah, know. something I don't like know. that. Um, but, yeah, uh, it, 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 it's crazy. Uh, but, yeah, that increase... Um, where did it go? They gave him the yeah. It, so it's a hundred ninety million dollar maximum tax levy. Wow. That is, I mean, yeah. That's huge. That's huge. Council members Amy Brendmoen, Tao, 
uh, knocker Chris Tolbert at <laughs> knocker. Is there a picture that goes along with that? Uh, come on, we gotta have some fun. N O E C K E R. What's your last name, Dor? That is the last name. Oh, Dor. I thought that was the first name. No. Knocker. No. Rebecca. So, how would you tell a knock knock joke? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I didn't know with the O and E whether to say knocker or necker. Either one is not good, so I don't know. I just want to see a picture of knockers. I mean, yeah, because they're together. If they're together, does somebody say, hey, party of three? The table's ready. The <laughs> I want to hear that over to your cop. <laughs> Knockers, your table's ready. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, you know, I'll tell you, this just goes to show how spontaneous the show is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, I can't breathe. <laughs> All right. All right. So who else voted for it? <laughs> um, oh. Chris Tolbert and Mitra Nelson. Hmm. Well, their so. names aren't as fun. No. <laughs> okay. Huh. But, yeah, part of what's driving this, um, they... If the voters vote no this November on the ordinance that allowed the city to roll out organized trash collection, uh, Carter's office has promised to continue the five-year contract with private haulers anyway, but without direct billing to the residents. Instead, the $27 million cost would be shifted to the general fund, which is supported heavily by property taxes. So it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. Oh, well, I've seen those choices before. We seem to talk about them often. Yes. You know, Elk Rivers, uh, uh, when we had Gary Christensen on the show about their sales tax. Yep. Yeah, well, we're just going to spend it anyway if you don't approve of it. Right. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> gee, and you want to get shot or hung? I don't know. I mean, yes. <laughs> well, that's just, I mean, look, th this is a small sampling. Um, and you people out there need to go to your city's website if, if it's half decent. I mean, some of them are, some of them aren't. The council meetings where they pass these preliminary levies should be available to be watched. Yeah. Um, and remember, you're, you're going to get hit from everywhere on these things, uh, from, from your, your school district, uh, especially if you have a vote coming up uh, here next month, and your city and your county and whoever else. Even the other people like watersheds and Met Council and whatever that aren't accountable to you all have levy authority here in Minnesota. That's true. So, oh, there you go. <laughs> I'm sure you're making me laugh, Jay. Just <laughs> uh, <laughs> this show. I, I, this is. I'm going to tell you something. You know, we have our wing in the Not Built Yet Podcast Hall of Fame. This one is one of the top ones, I think. So yeah. We get. You know, here's the thing. Once in a while, I go back, and I know our listeners do too, and listen to shows from a year or two ago. They're timeless. You know, a lot of them are. Yeah. But I think I can say this without sounding arrogant, that you and I get better and better and better at this. And you and I have like an unconscious way to play off of each other. Yeah. And it just gets better and better every time we do it. Yeah, I mean, episode oh. one, we kind of sounded like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and now, now we can speak in complete sentences. Yeah, so that's it, right. It's, We've it's advanced good. here. And, yes. Uh, <laughs> almost Not three much. years. Yeah, well, I mean, some progress is, you know. Some progress is good. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, but it, it, with a lot of this, if you can't laugh through it, you would cry through it. And so it's, it's good you, that. Uh, you have to make light of it to keep your sanity. Oh, boy. So, 
There's uh, there's some numbers from all around the state, and guess what? Your city is probably increasing taxes. Your county's probably increasing taxes. Your school district's probably increasing taxes. And if anybody's <laughs> decreasing them, we'd like to know. We would. I would like to see that. I would yeah, like to know. Yeah, pl- please do send that in to us if that's actually occurring, if anyone's actually doing it. A true cut, not yeah, we're cut cutting because, growth. right, right. <laughs> you can send that to us at commsolutionsmn at gmail.com. That is commsolutionsmn at gmail.com. And uh, you know, likewise, if your taxes are going up so much that you don't want to sit and take it anymore and you want to maybe think about running next year or get yourself onto an advisory commission, get a hold of us. <laughs> Get a hold of Sorry. us. Sorry. <laughs> My word. We're 12 on this show. <laughs> oh. We thank you guys very much for listening because uh, without you, we would just be talking into a couple of mics and it would be going off into the the ether out there somewhere and nobody would ever benefit from any of this. So hopefully it is a benefit to you. Hopefully uh, you can take what we say and uh, show your friends and show your family and uh, hopefully there's some, some good stuff in there for you that is going to help make your community a better place. Because that's really why we're here. So uh, we're going to take this away. And we're I don't know. Why does our show always devolve into chaos by the end? That's what I don't know. Uh, well, at least we're consistent. That's true. That's true. All right. That's all we got to say this week. Get a hold of us, please. Uh, we want to hear from you. If you got any questions, if you got anything you want to say about your city, hey, maybe we'll throw it on the podcast. All right. Well, that said, we love you, Minnesota. Now it's your turn to get to work. I get too caught